Here we'll talk about how we measure lengths and distances with metric units. When we're talking about linear measurements, we mean lengths or distances. And it doesn't just have to be straight lines, that could be curved lines too, like the uh, distance around a lake. Even though it's not a straight line, it's still something that you could measure with one of our common measuring tools, like a ruler or measuring tape. or an odometer, which is what you have in a car that measures the distance that your car has traveled. Metric rulers are used for measuring shorter lengths. Most rulers are 30 centimeters long. And that's like your common ruler that you've probably used at home or in the classroom. On the metric rulers, you'll usually see your units written somewhere on the ruler. So here we see, in this top ruler, we see centimeters written. And so it's showing you that this measurement from 0 to 1 is 1 centimeter, or from 0 to 2 is 2 centimeters, and so on. But sometimes you'll actually see the units written in millimeters. And so what this ruler is telling you it's, it's telling you that it's also a metric ruler. It's just telling you that the little gaps between each little tiny division is one millimeter long. And so what we would find is if we counted all those little lines, there are 10 millimeters in every one centimeter. So on this ruler, this is still the one centimeter mark, but it means that we've gone through 10 millimeters. And down here on the ruler, this is 6 centimeters, or 60 millimeters. So let's go through an example of how we use a metric ruler. So let's try to measure the length of the screw. So what we have to do is we have to put the ruler at the beginning of the screw and read off where it ends. So this is our 0 centimeter mark at the very beginning of the ruler. And here we go find the smallest tick here that lines up with the end of the screw. And we read the centimeters first, so that's a little past 10 centimeters. And each little tick actually gives us a decimal, so that's 10.567 centimeters. Measuring tapes can give us metric measurements that are a little longer than your common ruler. So these are good for lengths of about 5 to 10 meters long. In both of these examples, you'll actually see the centimeter measurements on the bottom. So there's your units, your centimeter measurements, and here's 2 centimeters, 3 centimeters, and so on. So you're reading off the bottom of the scale. The second measuring tape you see here is starting, we're, we're catching up with the measuring tape partway through. So you actually see that we're up to 170 centimeters at this mark. And the next mark is 171 centimeters. So the divisions in between are still counting 1, 2, 3, 4, but they're 1, 2, 3, 4 bigger than 170, the last big red number that it marks. So you have to be careful when you're reading these measuring tapes. There are 100 centimeters in one meter. So when we're at 170 centimeters, we're well over one meter of length. Here's a kind of tricky example of a metric measuring tape that is being used to measure the width of a bridge, a little suspension bridge or cable bridge. So you look at the measuring tape and we don't see any units on the measuring tape, but it's a metric measuring tape. And I can tell that because there's 10 divisions between say uh, 90 and 1600. So that means that it's giving us those little millimeter measurements. 
and that means that that gap is actually one centimeter across. So if that's one centimeter and you're noticing that the numbers are going up by 10 from one division to the next, that means that these numbers must be reading in millimeters. So that's 30 millimeters or 70 millimeters on our tape. So if we want to read this tape, we can see that our measurement's a little bit smaller than 1600 millimeters. That means that this last red number must have been 100 millimeters before, so that's 1500 millimeters. And let's try to figure out where this measuring tape ends. So if we go right to the end of the cable here, right to the end of the cable, we'd be at 1500 millimeters, and then we're 80 along, so 1500, 80, and then count the ticks, 81, 82, looks like 83. So 1,583 millimeters, according to our measuring tape. Lastly, we have odometers in our car that measure the distance driven in a vehicle. And these are always measured in kilometers. So odometers can measure two things, either the lifetime driven by the car, so this car has been driven over 59,000 kilometers, or you can also set a smaller scale that measures the distance driven in a single trip. And so this is really helpful to know when you're going to buy a car, how many total kilometers it's been driven in its lifetime. There are 1,000 meters in one kilometer.